This video is on the product and quotient rules. Um, so we're going to be talking about the product and quotient rules for derivatives. And, you know, when we approach this, it's really identifying for a product, and we'll start with that. If you have a function times a function, how would you take the derivative of that? So let's start with the product rule. So the product rule says, you know, if I have the derivative with respect to x of some function f of x times some other function g of x, you know, how do I take that derivative? And the way the rule works is you want to take the derivative of the first, so f prime of x, times, you're going to leave the second alone, so times g of x, and then you want to add that to take the derivative of the second, so g prime of x, times you leave the first alone, so times f of x. And that's really the rule. You can't just take the derivative of each piece individually and put it next to each other. It's not that, right? So for the product rule, you have two functions are being multiplied together, right? You take the derivative of the first times the second you leave alone, plus the derivative of the second times the first you leave alone. And, you know, you might notice as I'm saying it out loud, I'm talking about them as first and second functions. And that's usually easier for people to understand, um, just because memorizing, you know, f and g in here can be a little confusing when the functions are also named f and g later on. Uh, so let's look at some examples of this. So if I said, for example, to differentiate. And the first one we'll look at is y equals... And we'll just do a polynomial times a polynomial. So if I had x to the 4th minus 3x to the 7th plus 5 times 3x squared minus 5x. All right, so that's the first function I'm looking at. So when I wanted to take the derivative of this, uh, you know, you have a polynomial times a polynomial. It's a function times a function. You can use the product rule. Uh, some people distribute through something like this first and they can do it term by term and if you choose to do that that's fine um, but because we're looking at product well, I want to show you how this works so when we go to find y prime right according to how my definitions are written this is f of x times g of x but really this is the first function this is the second function so to find the derivative we want the derivative of the first function right so we want f prime of x the derivative of the first function well what's that well you bring the 4 down, so you have 4x to the 3rd, minus, bring the 7 down, 7 times 3 is 21, x to the, remember, take 1 away from the power, so x to the 6th, derivative of 5, since it's a constant, goes to 0, so that's the derivative of the first, times, you leave the second alone, so that stays times 3x squared minus 5x, right, so if you're following with the rule that we had above, this is like the f prime of x, this is the g of x, that's that first part of the rule, plus we want the derivative of the second function, derivative of the second function, 3x squared minus 5x, and we bring the power down in front, this will be 6x to the first power, minus the derivative of 5x, just minus 5, because the derivative of x uh, goes to 1, so 6x minus 5, make sure you put parentheses around it, right, so that's the derivative of the second, that's like the g prime of x from my definition, times the original first function, so x to the 4th minus 3x to the 7th plus 5. So this would be f of x. All right, so it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So, you know, something to point out here is I put parentheses around these. You need to put parentheses around those because, you know, this entire uh, function is being multiplied by this other function. Same thing here. So you do need those parentheses. Don't leave them off or it means something different. Uh, the other thing to point out is that I haven't simplified this. Typically, if it's something like this, I'm going to say do not simplify. So I'll ask you just to leave your answer like this. Um, I'll show you how to simplify another one in a little bit. But, you know, this would be your answer. You don't need to put this, you know, notation up top. That's just for me to help you understand where it came from. Uh, but if I wanted you to simplify this, you would actually have to distribute through, you'd have to FOIL here, you know, distribute through all the terms here, and then combine like terms. Um, if I'm just testing the rule, though, I'm going to ask you to not simplify. Later on in the course, you'll have to simplify. 
Uh, but that's something that you should know how to do from algebra. I don't want to spend time going over that part right now. Uh, if I were to give you this one, let's say it was y equals x to the fifth times 3x squared plus 7x minus 9. Now there's two approaches here, but uh, let's take an approach of a function times a function. So this is my first function, x to the fifth. It's a monomial. Times this would be my second function. And if you're thinking about using the rule, right, finding the derivative, y prime. Remember what the rule says, take the derivative of the first. So that would be 5x to the fourth. Bring the 5 down the front, subtract 1 from the x1. So the derivative of the first times you leave the second alone, 3x squared plus 7x minus 9. Plus, take the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of this function would be 3x squared. The derivative of 2 comes down, so it would be 6x subtract 1 from the x1. So 6x plus the derivative of 7x is just 7, right? The derivative of x is 1. And then the derivative of the constant goes to 0. So this is the derivative of the second function times, we're going to multiply this by the first times x to the fifth, right? The original first function. And you know that would be the answer if I said do not simplify. Uh, in this case, let's simplify it just so you know how to do it. Uh, if I was going to simplify this, it's still called y prime. Don't let that throw you off. You're distributing through here 5x to the 4th times 3x squared. 5 times 3 is 15. When you multiply things with the same base, uh, you want to add their exponents. So this is x to the 6th power. 5x to the 4th times 7x would be a plus 35x to the 5th. 5x to the 4th times negative 9 would be negative 45x to the 4th. Plus here, we're distributing x to the 5th in. 6x times x to the 5th would be 6x to the 6th. Uh, plus 7 times x to the 5th would be plus 7x to the 5th. And then once you have that, you can combine like terms. So y prime would equal... y prime would equal... Uh, combine like terms, 15x to the 6th plus 6x to the 6th would be 21x to the 6th. 35x to the 5th plus 7x to the 5th would be a plus 42x to the 5th. And then minus 45x to the 4th. And that would be the simplified form. If I said do not simplify, you could have left it right here, right after you've taken the derivative showing the rule. Uh, the reason that I simplified this is just to show you another way this might work. So that's the derivative. We found it using the product rule. If you notice, though, all right, so I'm just going to put or here and say we're going to do the same problem. But I'm going to say, or if you distribute first. If I distribute x to the fifth, then my original function y is then x to the fifth times 3x squared would be 3x to the 7th, x to the 5th times 7x would be plus 7x to the 6th, and then x to the 5th times a negative 9 would be negative 9x to the 5th. And then I took the derivative of this now. Well, now I don't have a product anymore, right? I just have individual terms. Um, so I have a polynomial in this case. I have individual terms, though. I can take the derivative term by term using, you know, the sum and difference rules we previously talked about. So 3x to the 7th, bring the 7 down, 7 times 3 is 21, subtract 1 from the exponent, makes that 21x to the 6th, plus here 6 times 7 is 42x to the 5th, and then minus here 9x to the 5th, 5 times negative 9 is negative 45x to the, subtract 1 is 4, and then you're done, and then you have it. It's the same answer, right? Notice those are the same answers. This one was a little easier to do, and most of the time you're going to have to decide what would be easier to work with. You know, in some cases, it's easier to work with it, uh, as we did in the first one, where you had individual uh, individual functions and you use the product rule. In other cases, if you just have a single monomial, it's probably easiest to just distribute it through and then take the derivative, because look how much faster that was. Um, either way is okay. Uh, one might get you to the answer quicker than others, so. Um, let's look at another one here. Uh, if I was to do... I'll do it on the next page. We'll call this one C. 
if I was asking you to differentiate f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 7 times 7x to the third minus square root of x. And do it using product rule. And uh, don't simplify your answer. We'll just keep it as is. But uh, you might want to pause the video, try it on your own, and then come back and take a look at the solution. So the first thing I would look at if I'm looking at this is I notice I have a function times a function. Um, so it tells me I'm going to use product rule. The next thing I notice is that I have the square root of x in here. And I don't have a rule for square root of x. Remember, I need these to be x to a power to use my power rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is a rewrite step, right? So RW stands for rewrite. It's still f of x. Don't start taking the derivatives at all. It's still the same original function. Make sure you know that. Uh, do I have to rewrite anything in the first polynomial? Well, in this case, no. They're all, you know, in a form that I know how to take the derivative of. Times for the second polynomial, 7x to the third, that's okay, right? You just have x to a power in there. Minus, how do I rewrite square root of x as x to a power? Well, it's x to the, remember, the power in x is 1 over the index of the root, which is 2. So minus x to the 1 half. And now once I'm here, now I'm ready to take my derivative. And I'm going to use... Right, this is a product. It's a function times a function. So we're using product rule. So now I'm going to take f prime of x. And remember how we do it. It's the derivative of the first. This is the first. So the derivative of the first, um, we would end up with 2x plus derivative of 3x is just plus 3. Derivative of negative 7 is 0. So that's the derivative of the first function. Times we leave the second one the same. So the second one stays as 7x to the third minus x to the one half. And then plus, remember product rule, you have a plus in between here. You want the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of 7x cubed gives me 21x squared uh, minus the derivative of x to the one half would be one half x to the, remember what you do, you subtract from the exponent. So one half minus one makes this to the negative one half. That's the derivative of the second times the original first, so times x squared plus 3x minus 7. And if I said do not simplify, that's it. That's the answer. All right, and make sure you leave it like that if I say do not simplify. If I asked you to simplify, you would have to manipulate this. You'd probably distribute through, distribute through, combine any like terms, rewrite any negative exponents as positive, rewrite any rational exponents as roots. Um, but in this case, I didn't ask you to simplify, so you could leave it like this. Um, you know, the, the thing about this is that because for the product rule, we have a plus in between, um, right? So it's a sum. The order of these terms could be opposite. You could have taken the derivative of the second times the first, right, and put that first, and then taken the derivative of the first times the second and put that second. Um, the reason I'm doing it the way I am is because when you use quotient rule, this is the order it has to be in. You'll see it in a little bit. Uh, but just getting you ready for that. But either way is okay. Uh, let's take a look at one more before we talk about quotient rule. So I'll call this letter D. So we're going to try to differentiate. I'll call this G of X equals X to the third times X squared plus 1 over X to the fourth. All right, and again, you might want to pause the video, try it on your own, and then, uh, you know, take a look to see if your solution matches up with mine. So, again, using product rule here, you know, we have a function times a function, but are all my pieces in a form that I already know how to take the derivative of? And, in other words, can I use the power rule on these? Well, I can on these two, but on the 1 over x to the 4th, I need to be x to a power. So the first step, we're going to rewrite. So we're going to rewrite, still call it g of x. It's still the same original function. I have this as x cubed times x squared plus, remember, 1 over x to the fourth. You rewrite this as x to the negative 4 to bring it up to the numerator as x to a power. Um, now, once you have this, you know, if you're going to use a product rule on it, that's okay. It's a function times a function. You can use product rule. We can find g prime of x as equal to 
the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared times you leave the second alone. Uh, leaving the second alone is just x squared plus x to the negative 4. Plus, we want the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second would be derivative, derivative of x squared is 2x. I bring the 2 down, subtracting 1 from the exponent. Plus, the derivative of x to the negative 4. We bring a negative 4 down front, becomes minus 4. x to the negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5 power. That's the derivative of the second times you have to multiply by the original first, so times x to the third. And if I said do not simplify, you could leave it like this. Uh, let's talk about what happens when you simplify this one, though, just to kind of take a look at how it works. So now I'm going to simplify. So if I found the derivative. I'm going to simplify this by distributing through. 3x squared times x squared would be 3x to the fourth. 3x squared times uh, positive x to the negative 4, well, that'll be plus 3x to the, remember what you're doing with these exponents. When you multiply things at the same base, you add their exponents. So in this case, it's really 2 minus 4, which makes this x to the negative 2. Plus here, I'm going to distribute the x cubed in. So it'll be plus x cubed times 2x is plus 2x to the fourth. x cubed times uh, a negative 4x to the negative 5. We know it's going to be negative. Uh, x to the third times x to the negative 5. So it'll be negative 4x to the, remember what you do with these exponents, you're adding them, so it's really to the negative 2. And we'll combine like terms. So we have g prime of x is equal to 3x to the fourth plus 2x to the fourth is 5x to the fourth. Uh, 3x to the negative 2 minus 4x to the negative 2 is negative, really 1x to the negative 2. And if I wanted to simplify this with only positive exponents, I end up with g prime of x equals, this is 5x to the 4th minus x to the negative 2. Remember, you write it as 1 over x to the positive 2 is the exponent now. And that's a simplified form. If I said do not simplify, right after you take the derivative, right, in this step here, you could have left it there. Now, you may have approached this in the other way that we talked about, right? Or, right, if you distribute first, right, so if you distributed first, you would have ended up with g of x equals x cubed times x squared would be x to the fifth power. Here, x cubed uh, times a 1 over x to the fourth would be plus really just x to the third over x to the fourth. If you remember how you divide that, would be x to the negative one. When you divide things at the same base, you subtract their exponents. All right, so that's distributing the x cubed through that. And then now take the derivative of this. Well, it's a little quicker, right? Derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth plus derivative of x to the negative one. Well, negative one comes down in front, makes this minus one x to the negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Simplifying this, you end up with g prime of x equals 5x to the 4th minus 1 over x to the positive 2. It's the same answer, but it's a little quicker. And we mentioned this earlier, right? If you have a monomial times a polynomial, it's probably easier to distribute that through and then take the derivative. So don't use the product rule in that case. But you could. It gets you the same answer, but it's a different amount of work that's involved. All right. Let's talk about the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, similar to the product rule, but it's for division of functions, right? If I have the derivative with respect to x of a function divided by a function, right? That's why it's called quotient rule. It's equal to. All right, now the rule's a little different than product rule. All right, so it's the derivative of the top, so f prime of x, times, leave the bottom alone. It's minus, so this is different, and then derivative of the bottom, so g prime of x, so derivative of the denominator, times you leave the numerator alone, so times the top, so times f of x, and it's all over the original bottom, right, the original denominator, 
squared. And it's probably easiest to talk about this as the top function and the bottom function rather than f of x and g of x because oftentimes those are our function names, right? So you don't want to use those uh, explicitly. But if you have a fr uh, function over a function, right? Function divided by a function, quotient rules how you take the derivative. You can't just take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. It doesn't work like that. So it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator, and you keep that original denominator and square it. Let's take a look at an example. So the directions here will be differentiate. Right? Find the derivative. So for the first one, I'll call this function g of x equals x squared minus 5x over 3x plus 7. So right away, you should notice you have a function divided by a function. Um, all your terms, you know, you don't see any roots. You don't have any, you know, x's in denominators uh, other than the one in the entire fraction. So you don't have to rewrite it at all. So a function divided by a function, if I'm trying to take the derivative, I want to use the quotient rule. For the quotient rule, um, right, this is g prime of x is going to be my derivative. And the rule says, take the derivative of the numerator, right, f prime of x. So the derivative of the numerator is x squared minus 5x. The derivative of that would be 2x minus 5 times, you leave the denominator alone, so times 3x plus 7. It's minus the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of 3x plus 7 would just be minus 3 times the derivative, or times just the numerator. The numerator is x squared minus 5x, and it's all over that denominator squared. So 3x plus 7 quantity squared. And now if I asked you do not simplify, you would leave it like this, right? So this is derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared, all right? So, you know, this is like the f prime for our definition. This is like our g, right? This is like the f, this is like the g. So this is like the f prime, this is g. This is g prime, this is f, and then this is, you know, the g squared down here. That's where that's coming from. Uh, be careful, this g that I'm talking about is not the same name as the g as we have for the function. It's really just referring to how it relates back to our definition. So, you know, we did it. If you wanted to simplify this, you know, now you just distribute through. So let's do it just to make sure you understand how, if I said do not simplify, you could leave it in the form we currently have it. Uh, g prime of x here, though, distributing through, you're going to foil this. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 7 is a positive 14x. Negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x. Negative 5 times 7 uh, is negative 35. Here, this negative belongs really with the 3. It belongs the whole thing. Uh, I would look at this as being negative 3 getting distributed through. So this becomes negative 3x squared. You don't really need these first parentheses because it's only a single term. So negative 3x squared and a negative 3 times a negative 5x would be a positive 15x. It's all over. Don't expand this. Leave this as a perfect square. Uh, 3x plus 7 the quantity squared. And then we're just going to combine like terms. Combining like terms here. Uh, 6x squared minus 3x squared will give me 3x squared. I have 14x minus 15x is negative x plus 15x. Well, that's going to give me back to 14x, so plus 14x. And then we have minus 35. Over down here, we have 3x plus 7, the quantity squared. And so this would be, you know, g prime of x, the derivative in simplified form. All right, but the key thing is, is that when you, you have a function divided by a function, you have to use quotient rule. You can't just divide or just divide the numerator derivative by the denominator derivative. It doesn't work like that. Um, let's look at another one here. 
if I said I had uh, this here, call this B. Uh, if I had f of x equals 1 plus x squared over x to the third power. Uh, noticing right away you have a function divided by a function. You might want to try to use quotient rule. And if you were to do that, right, f prime of x, the derivative here, remember how it works. You want to take the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of 1 plus x squared, the derivative of 1 goes to 0. The derivative of x squared is just 2x. So the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, uh, which is just x to the third, minus, make sure you put minus, the derivative of the denominator, which is just the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared, times the numerator, you're going to leave alone, so 1 plus x squared, all over the denominator, x cubed, squared, right? So the derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. Another way of saying that, you know, a little more succinctly. Uh, once you're here, if I don't ask you to simplify, you leave it like that. If I do ask you to simplify, make sure you understand how. Uh, it's, you know, fairly straightforward, I think. You're going to multiply through. This ends up equaling, all right, 2x times x cubed is 2x to the fourth. Negative 3x squared, make sure you take the negative with it when you distribute through. So negative 3x squared times 1 is negative 3x squared. Negative 3x squared times a positive x squared is a negative 3x to the fourth. And then it's all over. When you have a power raised to a power, a power to a power, you're going to multiply those together. So you get over x to the sixth, right? You multiply the exponents. And then this is equal to combining like terms here. I've got uh, 2x to the fourth minus 3x to the fourth would be a negative x to the fourth. Uh, minus 3x squared all over x to the 6th. And if you wanted to simplify this further, uh, you could factor out from the numerator here uh, an x squared. So you would end up with x squared. Or you could take out a negative x squared if you wanted, your choice. Uh, x squared and then negative x squared minus 3 here over x to the 6th. Now that we have a product up here, these can cancel. Two of these cancel with two of these to give me x to the 4th in the denominator. That's just a 1 there in front. So you end up with your answer being uh, negative x squared minus 3 over x to the 4th. And that's okay. You can leave it like that. Uh, making sure you know that negatives with the x squared. So if you factor the negative out of here, there'd be a negative out in front of the whole thing. You know, you could have wrote this as just another form. Uh, you could have had x squared plus 3 over x to the fourth, the negative out in front of the whole thing. That means the same as having that negative brought through. We just factored it out to the front. So you may see this as an answer. You may see this as an answer. If you factor out a negative x squared out of here, you would have ended up with this. They mean the same thing. Now, it's not the only way you could have approached this problem, right? You could actually have done this at the beginning. Maybe I'll just write it here so you can see it. Because you have a monomial denominator, it's only because you have a monomial denominator, you really could have rewritten the original function each term over x to the third, right? So if you did a rewrite at the beginning, you could have rewritten this as f of x equals 1 over x to the third, plus x squared over x to the third. Now remember, you're only allowed to do this because it's a single term. You couldn't do this if there was more than one term down here. Um, when I do this, I end up with rewriting it in a uh, friendly form for the power rule. I'd write it as x to the negative 3, plus this would be x squared over x to the third is x to the 2 minus 3 is x to the negative 1. And then taking the derivative of that, f prime of x, that would be equal to, well, derivative of x to the negative 3, you're bringing that down as negative 3x to the 
power on that is negative 4 because you subtract 1 from the exponent. Negative 1 gets brought in front, so negative times a positive makes us a negative 1. And then x to the, this is negative 2, right? Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And if you were to rewrite this, right, f prime of x in a nicer form, the negative exponent brings us down to the bottom. We have negative 3 over x to the fourth minus 1 over, remember the negative exponent brings it down to the bottom as a positive power, so 1 over x squared. Um, this actually ends up being the same thing as what you have here. It's, it might not look the same to you, but it is actually the derivative, right? Negative 3 divided by x to the fourth is this part. Negative x squared over x to the fourth would reduce to the negative 1 over x squared. So it's another way to get to the same answer. This one was a little more succinct. It's similar to when you would have a, mono, a monomial when you were doing the product rule and you distribute it through. If you're dividing by a monomial, you may want to divide each term by it first rather than use a quotient rule. Right? So it's your choice. Um, you know, there's personal preference involved there. This is a little faster, though, if you notice it. But it's only because we had a monomial denominator, one term in the denominator, that this made a difference. Uh, let's take a look at uh, just a couple more. All right, so what's that letter B? Yeah, it's supposed to be letter C. And we'll do this one pretty straightforward. Um, if I gave you, say, y equals uh, x to the fourth over 3x squared plus 1. And ask you to differentiate that. I mean, you take the derivative. If I'm taking the de derivative here, uh, first thing I notice, I have a function divided by a function. So it's telling me I should try the quotient rule, right? Uh, you know, this monomial is in the numerator. You can't do what we did in the last example. You can't split this up over each part of this, right? So you have to use quotient rule to take this derivative. So uh, let's take a look at what y prime would be. y prime, all right, we want the derivative of the top, right? So derivative of the top would be 4x cubed times, you leave the denominator alone, so 3x squared plus 1 minus for the quotient rule, right? So the derivative of the top times the bottom, that's what I just did there, minus the derivative of the bottom, so derivative of 3x squared is going to give me minus 6x. Derivative of 1 is just 0, so it's minus 6x times the numerator, right? So times x to the fourth, so times the top, right? So let's just go over this part again, right? It's the derivative of the numerator, right? Derivative of the top times the denominator times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top of the numerator all over that same denominator, 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Don't forget this part. A lot of times people leave this off. You need this for the quotient rule, right? It's still part of the rule. You need to have it there. If I told you do not simplify, leave it like this. And one of the reasons why I ask you not to simplify sometimes is so I can see that you know the rule, you know the form. The other reason is that sometimes, you know, you might make an error if you simplify this. And I'm really trying to test you on knowing the rule, not testing you on the algebra. You do need to know the algebra because it does come into play later on. Um, but that's a prerequisite skill we expect you to have at this point. So uh, if I said do not simplify, you could leave it like this, and that would be fine. Uh, but let's simplify it just so we can practice it. Simplifying here, uh, I would bring the 4x cubed, distributing it through here. So we have y prime equals 4x cubed times 3x squared would be 12x to the fifth. 4x cubed times a positive 1 is plus 4x cubed. Negative 6x times x to the fourth is just negative 6x to the fifth. It's all over this 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Do not expand this. It doesn't help you to expand this. It won't help you later in the course either. You want it actually to be in this form. Um, so leave it like that. Simplifying this a little further. Uh, 12x to the 5th minus 6x to the 5th would just give me 6x to the 5th. Uh, plus we have 4x cubed. Over here again, 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared. You could leave it like that. Uh, you may think of factoring from this numerator because we did it earlier. If you did factor from the numerator, uh, 
you know, you can see what would happen. The GCF, right factoring from the numerator, would be a 2x to the third power. If I did that, what I would have left here would be a 3x squared. Um, but 4x cubed factoring out of 2x cubed would give me plus 2. This is all over 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Factoring out doesn't give you any advantage here. These aren't common factors that cancel. So this is fine for your final answer. But if you wanted to check to see if there was anything that could reduce further, you know, factoring out a GCF or factoring the numerator completely sometimes is helpful just to make sure nothing cancels. And you'll see that a little bit later in the course. All right, and we'll look at uh, just one more. I think we'll use the product rule again. Uh, if I was to give you this here, f of x equals 3x to the fourth plus 2 times the fourth root of x to the third. All right, so the fourth root of x to the third uh, minus 5. And then we'll multiply that by 4x minus 1. And I ask you to differentiate. We can take the derivative. You should notice the product, right? It's a function times a function, so that's good. And before you take the derivative, though, you want to make sure you rewrite it in a form that will help you find the derivative using the power rule, which means that any roots in here, right, have to be rewritten. And this would apply if you're doing the quotient or the product rule. It doesn't really matter, right? Anytime you're taking derivatives, one of your first things you want to do is rewrite it. And that's really going to be key throughout the course. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this, right? As this is still f of x, don't write f prime. And 3x to the fourth, that's okay. We have our variable to a power, so that's all, all right. Plus 2 times, now remember, if I have the fourth root of x to the third power, the base is x. The power on it, we had 3 over whatever the index of the root is, so it's over 4, so it's 3 fourths. Don't put over 2, it's not a square root. That's the thing to be careful of. Um, minus 5 stays minus 5, and then times 4x minus 1 here. And now we'll take the derivative. Taking the derivative here, f prime of x. Notice you have a function times a function, right? This is the first function that times the second function. This is telling you you want to use product rule. To use product rule, we're going to take the derivative of the first. So this will be 12x, right? Bring the 4 down. 4 times 3 is 12. x to the 4 minus 1 power is 3. Plus, make sure you understand how this part's going to work. Uh, 3 fourths gets brought down. 3 fourths times 2 would be 6 fourths, which reduces to 3 halves x to the 3 fourths minus 1 is negative 1 fourth power. And then minus 5, the derivative of that is 0. And that's the derivative of the first, right? So don't lose track of what you're doing. Derivative of the first times you're going to leave the second alone. That's what product rule says to do. So times 4x minus 1. Product rule means plus to sum. So you add on. Now you want to take the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of the second function is the derivative of the 4x minus 1, which is just 4. Since it's just a monomial, I don't need to put parentheses around it. So plus 4 times the original first. So 3x to the 4th plus 2x to the 3 fourths minus 5. And then once you have this, right, if I don't ask you to simplify, I'm okay with you leaving it in this form. Um, for practice, let's, you know, go through and see what would happen if you were to distribute through. So if I said do not simplify, leave it right here. Do not go any further. Uh, if I ask you to simplify, right, and if I don't say do not simplify, the implication is that you should always simplify. Uh, so simplifying this, this first part, I'm going to FOIL it, all right? So 12x cubed times 4x would give me 48x to the fourth power. And then 12x cubed times 
a negative 1 will be minus 12x cubed. Uh, you have 3 halves x to the negative 1 fourth times 4x. is kind of an unusual thing to look at. But remember, multiplying the coefficients, 3 halves times 4 is 4 times 3 divided by 2. So 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2 will be plus 6. X to the, remember what you're doing with these powers, when you, when you multiply two things at the same base, you add their exponents. This is really a 1 plus a negative 1 fourth will make this 3 fourths. And the last term will have a positive times a negative makes a negative 1 times 3 halves is minus 3 halves. This can stay x to the negative 1 fourth for now. And then simplifying the second part, we're distributing a positive 4 through. If this is a negative sign, you bring the negative with it. Since it's positive, you bring the positive through. Positive 4 times 3x to the fourth is plus 12x to the fourth. Positive 4 times 2x to the 3 fourths is plus 8x to the 3 fourths. And positive 4 times negative 5 would make this negative 20. And now we should combine like terms. And remember, this is still all the derivative, right? It's all f prime of x, just simplifying. Once we took the derivative here, we were there. Now all of this is just simplifying our answer. Uh, so we had 48x to the fourth plus 12x to the fourth. So that gives us 60x to the fourth. Uh, I got minus 12x to the third. I don't see any other 12x to the third, so my, or any x to the third. So minus 12x to the third. Uh, I see I've got 6x to the 3 fourths plus 8x to the 3 fourths. So these are, you know, like terms. They have the same variables, the same exponents, so I can add them. This is plus 14x to the 3 fourths. Uh, we have this negative 3 halves x to the negative 1 fourth. I don't see any others of those. Uh, just to, you know, simplify it, I'll rewrite it as minus 3 over 2x to the positive 1 fourth power. And then we already used this when we combined with our, our first part. We already used that. And then minus 20 is what's left. And then the last thing we can do is write these uh, rational exponents as roots if we wanted to. Or maybe we will just to see what happens. You end up with f prime of x equals. So we have 60x to the fourth minus 12x to the third plus 14. Make sure you understand what the root is. The, denominator of this rational exponent tells you the root. So it's the fourth root of x to the third power minus 3 over 2. Again, this is the fourth root of x to the first power. It's just the fourth root of x in the denominator there. And then minus 20 at the end. And that is the simplified form. So simplifying might be a pain. Um, it is really just exercising your algebra skills, though. Right, so calculus, you know, the derivatives part of this isn't overly challenging. It's understanding the rules. The, the part that trips people up sometimes is they don't understand the algebra. They make mistakes there. So be very careful when you're, uh, when you're simplifying. Again, if I say do not simplify in my directions, just take the derivative using the rule and leave it in the form of the rules so I can see that you know the rule. If I don't say do not simplify, I assume you will simplify. And you should always simplify, which would be uh, what we did down here when we simplified all right, so, you know, make sure you know the difference between product and quotient rule. Uh, remember, a product rule is for when you have a function uh, times a function and you're trying to take the derivative like we just did. Um, the quotient rule, remember, is when you have a function divided by a function and you're trying to take the derivative. And, you know, the rules are unique. You have to practice them to make sure you understand them.